another thing that comes into play when you think about network security, it's talking about network hardening. And it's figuring through how are you going to secure your network. So one of the things you're going to see talked about is MAC limiting and filtering. And that's allowing access based upon the MAC address of your device. So, for instance, if the computer I've got up here, if I were to set up MAC filtering to where I can only access, and I, I don't believe you can do this, let's talk hypothetically here, that I can only access SharePoint from this device. You know, it's going to check the MAC of this device for accessing resources. To where I couldn't come in with this separate computer and then go, okay, I want to log into SharePoint on that other device. The MAC address is different. It would disallow access. 802.1x security, it's that one. It's using, it's for secure network authentication. Another thing that you can do is to disable unused ports on your switch. So you know, has everyone here seen a pizza box switch before or know what that looks like? So if you've got a big old pizza box switch, odds are you, know, you, you may not be using all of those ports at any given time for wired access. So one of the best practices is if that port's not being used, go ahead and disable access to it. So that, that way that can help prevent a you know, rogue access point or potentially an evil twin, depending on how it's being carried out. That is an attack where, you know, we talked about that Tuesday, but it's an evil twin, it's a denial of service. So what you're gonna do is if you're gonna set up in like Starbucks from your phone, or your laptop, you're going to attack their wireless network and take it down, prevent access to it, and you're going to set up your own wireless access point with potentially the same SSID and same password to try to collect data. You know, it's you're impersonating a legitimate network. Work in a rogue access point. It's just something that's unauthorized. Another thing you're going to see is to disable unused services or applications. So. Biggest thing I can think of, you know, if you're not, you don't have any reason to be running remote desktop on your Windows machine, you need to disable it. If you aren't running SSH on anything, you need to disable it. It's going ahead and preventing, you know, you don't keep something running if you're not using it. You know, and just by do, taking those few steps, you're, you're closing some gaps that an adversary could come in and try to take over that machine. One of the biggest things, and I say this now more than ever, is you know, systems updates and service packs. If you don't get anything else from me tonight, for the love of all that is holy on this earth, update your machines. Uh, it, it's I, I've worked and helped out with church IT before, and I've seen some horrendous systems. They're, they're, and I won't name the church, but it was... I. At one church I was on leadership for that they're like, hey, the, the Windows machine up in the sound booth's acting up. Could you take a look at it? And I'm like, sure. And I had never seen it before. But it was running Windows XP in 2019. XP. So update your systems. Just because if you you if you need to run a legacy system, you make adjustments. But by keeping your machine up to date, you're continuously staying ahead of the curve. If you're running a Windows machine with Windows Defender, by getting those signatures, you're able to better defend your machine. One of the other things there is using continuous security monitoring, that you're keeping an eye on what's going on in your network. You have an idea what's going on in your house, and you're not finding out when something's breaking. You know, with that, it's you're, ta you're taking due care to make sure you have proper monitoring setup, and you're taking due diligence to make sure that things are getting checked. And the other thing is the remediation policy. So if you run an audit to see how compliant you are with the NIST 800-171, you know, that audit's going to tell you where you're not compliant and where you need to make some adjustments. You know, another thing is going to be incident handling, response, and reporting. So, Ben had mentioned we were running an incident response with a ransomware attack recently. And one of the biggest things I had to learn was, okay, what do I need to be taking notes of here? You know, we had a question that came up of, do we need to contact law enforcement? Who do we call? So there's some things there to be cognizant of that we don't ever want something to go wrong, but 
And audit's just kind of going to help identify what you need to do to get back where you need to be. Incident handling is, you know, very simply, what do you do when things go wrong? So, and with firewall, we're going to talk a bit more about that. But that's going to be, you know, figuring out what ports you're blocking, what you're disabling. And the last thing here is going to be when an account, when a when an employee leaves a company, disable the account or are you going to delete it? 